Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. So today on Eco Ask Why, we're going to be exploring the topic of one-line visualization. We're seeing more and more shifts to Industry 4.0, the IOT, where companies want data that is accurate and accessible. This is trickling into the power side of facilities, and is where we'll center our discussion today. So pretty excited about today, got Mr. Mike Rathbun, who is Eco's Manager of Power and Control within our Solution Architecture Group. Mike's got 35 years of experience. He's been with Eco for nine years. He's a ton of fun. Uh, just one of my a dear friend. Uh, really looking forward to this discussion with Mike because he really is an expert and going to going to kick it off with a, a little debate. So we have a back and forth banter going on at Eco between what should it be called, a single line or a one line. So Mike, going on the record, you only got one vote. What do you call it, my man? So this vote's very easy for me. As long as I've been around, I think the accepted is one line. I tried this out in conversation with a couple of individuals here recently, and five out of five came back with a one line as opposed to a single line. Five out of five. That's pretty cool. I, I put a uh, – we actually did a post at Eco on this topic, and oh, right now we're over 5,000 views. I have probably 100 – uh, votes back on it it's pretty resounding on one line uh, i'd say 80 percent. it's funny it's a compa- it, people get pa- uh, passionate about this topic right the engineers they'll come back have 40 plus years of experience i've always called it a single line or i've got 45 plus years and, and i've always called it a one line so it's interesting to see the banter back and forth but uh so when we're talking about one line visualization and that's just a like you know, kind of a, a big term in itself, like one-line visualization. What what exactly are we talking about here, Mike? So it's a it is a new and interesting topic. Um, I think we're all familiar, uh, if you're listening it onto this cast of of the one line slash single line is a, you know basic diagram of the electrical distribution system within a facility. Moving that to a visualization, a a real interactive type environment where we're not just looking at a 20-year-old paper copy of a drawing, but a live representation of the status of the equipment, feedback on the conditions and the parameters, the operation of that equipment, really takes that discussion or the the, the diagnostic support of what a one-line diagram is used for to a different level. I got you. I got you. So for our listeners out there, you know, and they're considering a project like this, the focus of this podcast is asking why, right? Why does this matter? Why, why would one-line visualization matter to an engineer or plant manager, or, you know, decision makers within the plants that we, that we serve? So I think that's actually a very long list, and we'll try okay. and hit some of that. But um, let's just start <clears throat> from something that's, you know, important to all of us in the industry um, from a safety aspect. If you can imagine a virtual um, representation, of a virtual one line of a piece of electrical distribution gear, being able to interact with the information associated with that gear without actually physically being next to the equipment or in the room or possibly even operating that equipment from remote. So I think there, there's, a, there's a huge piece of safety that comes into this. Another aspect that, that I've always struggled with and that gets me excited about the virtual one line is traditionally as a facility it goes through time and there's changes made to the electrical distribution system, we're relying on that document that somebody has to pick up and make changes to to keep up to date. And then when we do need it, somebody has to go find that document. So the ability of this virtual environment or representation of the one line being available and accurate at all times to anybody that has a need for that information 
really, I mean, it, it affects us on our ability to manage equipment readiness, the diagnostic requirements that goes into keeping equipment running. Mm-hmm. I think those are kind of some big areas, safety and the ability to operate and, and manage the equipment that you're responsible for. Got you. Very good. Safety, virtual environment, all important stuff. So, Mike, let's just talk about the people. Who could benefit from this type of technology? Well, really, anyone involved um, within a manufacturing or industrial facility, from the maintenance personnel and electricians on the plant floor that have to interact with that gear, up to uh, engineering personnel having relevant and up-to-date information at their disposal for understanding and diagnosing the system, And I think something that gets overlooked quite often is when there's projects going on in an industrial plant and you're bringing in an outside contractor, I've been in those shoes, and you really don't have any understanding of the scope of the layout of the electrical distribution system of which you may be involved in. Having that virtual one line, it's right there and ready. It tells you the whole story. Very good. Very good. So that, that gets that new employee not familiar with the facility, the information that is accurate, to that date where they're standing in front of it right there. That's it. Up-to-date, real information that you can work with and be comfortable in that environment. That's great. That's great. So a lot of our listeners are probably wondering, okay, so this sounds great, very neat, interesting technology. So how would someone get started? And it could be a big project. It could be a big undertaking. So if you were to give someone advice on, on the steps to get going, where would you start at? I think it begins with the basic technology that's out there today. There are many OEMs in the power and distribution um, world that have started developing products that help support this type of technology. Um, so it's, it's from an, a learning and understanding point, doing some research, working with an individuals such as us that could introduce you to some of this technology. And a piece of it that may go overlooked is having a backbone within an industrial plant environment. And that backbone is a network that can typically um, capture that data, move that data throughout the operational environment that you're living within. So maybe discussion with your IT group, your uh, electrical and electronic champions within your plant about what some of those requirements may be to, be to add additional data and information on a network. Gotcha. So you're talking about several different groups, several different decision makers. Have you found it with your experience, and you have a lot in this in this space, focusing on a smaller project to get started with the one-line visualization like this or just open up the gates and let's go? No, I think you can start small um, down to a specific piece of equipment. The technology to this date allows for that expandability and scalability that we don't necessarily have to look at an entire uh, manufacturing facility and lay out a plan to virtualize everything in the plant. It could start as simply as a single piece of equipment that we would add in the technology that would be able to plug in and represent that specific piece of gear. Okay. You got me thinking now, Mike. So you're talking about a single piece of equipment and the technology. So device level. Now let's talk about some of the devices uh, that you would need to, to really make an investment like this beneficial, right? Uh, you have to have a certain level of, of technology installed just to reap the benefits of, of that investment. Can you talk us through some of, of maybe what some of those devices would be that if I'm not ready to do the big, the big all-off project right now, what could I start incorporating in my plant so that when I, when I get a good install base, I'd be you know, ahead of the game from the, the one-line visualization project. Yeah, sure. So let's look at it from the perspective of, say, one piece of low-voltage switch gear um, that typically would have several breakers in it, providing protection to those areas of the plant that is providing power. Um, traditionally, we're looking at, within that, tripping devices, monitoring devices, such as a power meter, protective relays, that may be involved in that. All of those de- devices are the basis for developing the parameters that we're talking about, such as your voltage levels, current levels, power quality levels, all those things that would be pertinent data. 
from those types of devices, generally there is a device that is similar to a gateway that receives all that information. And that could be the source for your visualization uh, embedded within that gateway. And from there, that gives you the scalability to expand throughout the plant, integrating that information to other operational systems. Got you. Very good. Very good. So let's let's walk down the road. I, I have I, I have this plant. I have these devices. I'm ready to start it to look at this project further, right? And to really make this happen. Let's talk friction points because we all know when you int- you know introduce new technology, sometimes there's friction points within a plant. They could be internally. They could be you mentioned uh, IT earlier, so there's the whole IT OT uh, discussion that that probably would get involved in something like this. Return on investment, you know, just funding. What friction points do you think uh, our users are, would would run into trying to introduce this type of technology? I think you touch on the main one there with IT and OT and electrical equipment. Obviously, there's purchasing considerations um, in building that case. But in in all the projects I've been involved in, uh, I make a clear recommendation in the beginning. If if you don't have a clear line of responsibility with a network or the IT or the OT group and who takes responsibility there for bringing new devices into an existing network, I recommend working with a partner that has a very high level of industrial IT, OT experience. Being able to bridge that conversation with the groups involved all the way up to potentially a corporate IT environment really is essential. And it has to happen from the beginning. Very good. Very good. So a lot of groups, a lot of people, it sounds like, you know, working with the right partner to develop that plan obviously is very important. So very good stuff. Let's say the project is is done and, and we've decided to move forward and we're trying to, to look back and say, okay, at the end of the day, when this project is done, how is this going to help the heroes in our industry? I think at that point we fall back on the the initial ideas uh, that we discussed is with this type of implementation and technology available, we can lean on the the safety aspects immediately, being able to provide that live understanding for anyone involved with operating or interfacing with electrical gear. Very good. I mean, you, you went right where, in my mind, the value is, and that's the safety. I mean, at the end of the day, we want everybody that's in the, the, that are in the plants to go home. And when you're interacting with that gear, with that power, that opportunity exists for something to happen. So anytime we can you know, get people away from that, if they don't have to be in that environment, I think it's good. You know, I think it makes their job easier. It makes it safer. And it's a really good opportunity to look at for investment for the people as well as getting the data that users would like to have right yeah and i think it's uh we don't want to overlook beyond the safety aspect the impact to a manufacturer's process being able to understand react to and diagnose conditions that come up with an electrical distribution system having that information real up to date live parameters in front of you, understanding status in the event where there's been a problem in the electrical distribution system affecting the plant, we have that immediate insight to understand, correct, and move forward with the operations. I'm glad you brought that up. So give us an example, right? Where would that, in a real-life situation, come to fruition? So maybe it's easy for me to give an example for this understanding. My traditional experience um, around industry when it comes to distribution type of equipment and the, the monitoring devices, the relays, those types of things that are there currently, when a technician who doesn't necessarily engage with that equipment on a regular basis has to respond to something such as a tripped breaker, um, that has created a, uh, an area within the manufacturing process that is without power. Um, that te- technician now has to look at a device that he's typically not all that comfortable with, 
and develop an understanding based on a limited readout. Um, this generally would occur standing at the gear, interfacing with that device, scrolling through multiple menus to try and develop an understanding. That takes time, right? Just to collect the information, the understanding to try and figure out what steps to take, what's going to be required to re-energize that particular piece of the gear. We look at that in the virtual world. That information is now. It's available to us in real time. Under normal circumstances, that information is in plain English to us. It could be represented as a flashing warning screen. This is the reason for this typical event. Very good. Very good. Well, Mike, we, we've really dug deep into one-line visualization here today. I've uh, enjoyed the conversation. I think uh, hopefully we brought some value to our listeners, someone that want to look into projects like this. They, can, they have a, a better understanding of some of the friction points. Definitely the safety, the virtual environment is very cool. That, that is neat stuff. So let's just end with uh, a little bit about one of our heroes, and that's you. So you're a pretty passionate guy. <laughs> Love to hear, you know, why do you enjoy what you're doing? I've seen you in front of people for nine years now. Uh, you have a passion about you, particularly on topics like this. Where do you find that, that, that joy and fulfillment at in your career? Right now what I'm doing brings together, t- you know, two things that are very important to me. Working in electrical engineering and technology has been my passion since I was very young. I decided to tear apart my father's color TV when I was eight years old um, up to the present. Uh, The other side of that is being able to serve people in industry. I get a lot out of that. Obviously, being able to help somebody solve a problem and get them to a place where they're more comfortable, they're achieving their goals, um, that service to my community is, is a big piece of it. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Mike, for your for your time today. Really enjoyed it. Hope it brought everyone value. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com. 